Topping our newscast tonight, Building Back Better in Barbuda. DCA provides update on building code adherence on the Sister Isle. Warning about derelict buildings. Homeowners urged to pay keen attention. And Police Week officially begins with worship. The ABS Evening News begins now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening. Welcome to the weekend edition of the ABS Evening News. And a warm welcome to those of you joining us via our website, abstvradio.com, or our Facebook Live. I am Sherilyn Beezer. It has been two years since Hurricane Irma ravaged the sister isle of Barbuda. Property damage was immense, and some raised concern that the building codes had not been adhered to in some instances. ABS's Rakib Aparicio sought an update from the Development Control Authority. This was a scene following the passage of Hurricane Irma in 2017, Barbuda almost unrecognizable beneath the rubble. Chief Town and Country Planner within the Development Control Authority, Frederick Salfour, says the sister isle was not adhering to the country's building codes. We had some problems in Barbuda. Um, in the early 2000s, Barbuda sent a number of persons to Antigua, to the DCA, for training as building inspectors. Sofo says these persons were trained, certified, and sent back to Barbuda under a planning commission in place to review construction plans. Uh, unfortunately, it fell apart and the persons who were trained as building inspectors were redeployed to other jobs. The DCA official says because there's no one in place in Barbuda to maintain building standards, many homes were built without proper assessments. But is the situation different now, two years later? DCA building inspector Rohan Jarvis explains. After going back to Barbuda, they are adhering a lot to the building code. So there's a noticeable shift? There's a notice, noticeable shift in the, the way that they're doing their construction. Sofo says two persons have been selected as building inspectors specifically for Barbuda. One is already trained and one is almost completed a training, a, a, a man and a woman. He tells ABS, these new building inspectors will be deployed once final preparations are completed with the Barbuda Council. In the meantime, he says the DCA is routinely visiting the sister isle to oversee building construction. Rakib Aparis reporting for ABS News. Thank you, Jamie. Meanwhile, DCA, that should be, thank you, Rakib, I'm sorry. Meanwhile, DCA Chief Town and Country Planner Frederick Southwell is reminding members of the public that they have a duty to prevent their properties from becoming derelict. Presently, if we get a complaint that there appears to be a derelict building in a community, we'll try and contact the owner and have the owner either repair the building or demolish it. Should they not be able to reach the owner, Southwell says the DCA will take matters into their own hands. Our building inspector and civil engineer will do a report on the structural soundness of the building. If it's found to be unsound, we will do a report and then have the building demolished. He says DCA has had to step in on multiple occasions. Just a reminder, Southwell says, says this applies to both abandoned homes and business establishments. In other news, the 51st annual Police Week officially opened today, invoking God's blessings with a church service. The week is being celebrated under the theme, Raising the Standard of Police Through Equality and Integrity, Police Week 2019. Departed officers were also remembered during a minute of silence. Here are some of the highlights. Lord be glorified, we're to give you Roy T. Bennett, a U.S. attorney and also a chartered accountant, 
in one of his favorite quotes said, do what is right, not what is easy, nor what is popular. With these sayings, we once again are making a commitment to the nation of Antigua and Barbuda to be the best police force we can be. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. When pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if there come unto you or your assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, and there come also a poor man in vile raiment. Break for, break for, break for, break for, break for, break for, break for Sing break for, break for, break for. As you enter Police Week 2019, let me place before you a man who through determined and deliberate choice attained the highest standard of integrity. He is the model or pattern that we are expected to aspire to. There was once a man named Job who lived in the land of Oz. And of course, the uh, ever famous, famous Kaufman's Cup will be held tomorrow afternoon. As parents prepare for the school commute tomorrow, there is a reminder of the ongoing roadworks on Fries Hill Road and Sir George Walter Highway. Motorists are also reminded that a section of Fries Hill Road between Sincere Drive and the Cedar Valley Main Road remains closed with only local access. Public Relations Officer, Project Implementation Management Unit, Sean Thomas, says motorists have been heeding the call to utilize Marble Hill Road as the main diversion route if going from the northern side of the island into St. John's proper. He says the appeal remains in place in an effort to avoid congestion on Old Pope's Head Road. Parents taking their children to St. Andrews are cautioned not to park on Old Pope's Head Road and to use the school's entrance and exit. Thomas offers this reminder for persons traversing Fries Hill Road. If you're traveling on Fries Hill Road and you're moving, let's say, towards Epicurean, once you would have passed Epicurean and those businesses there, you take Old Oil Refinery Road, which is Extreme Health and Fitness Road, you make your way onto Marble Hill, and then you can get to Cedar Grove from there. However, if you're traveling in the opposite direction and you have to utilize Fries Hill Road, you're being asked to use Marble Hill Road then take Old Oil Refinery and make your way back onto Fries Hill Road. The PRO assures there will be no other road closures. Thomas says drivers have also been complying with the temporary traffic light system on Sir George Walter Highway. Still in national developments, the health and well-being of our elderly population is at the forefront of discussions at the Premier School of Allied Health Sciences. The organization hosted a lecture on Saturday to on outline details and the dangers about this disease. This comes ahead of World Alzheimer's Day, which will be observed on the 21st of September. ABS's Rakib Aparicio has more. Imagine you're married to someone for 52 years, and one day they get up and ask you, who are you? The World Health Organization defines dementia as a syndrome characterized by disturbance of multiple brain functions, including memory, thinking, orientation, comprehension, calculation, learning capacity, language, and judgment. The body lists Alzheimer's as dementia's most common form. Fact, each minute there's a new diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. Dementia specialist Dr. Talia Smith says discussions on Alzheimer's disease should also include the caregivers. Most of the Alzheimer's patients are being cared for by untrained family members. They don't understand, they have no clue what they're doing, but because they love the person, they do what they can to help that person. Many times, she says, persons are unaware of just how much pressure is placed on caregivers. You have to deal with that person on a day-to-day -day basis. Today, he or she may be fine, but tomorrow is like something just, I don't know, it's like you're dealing with the devil out of hell, just for lack of a better word. There is no known cure for Alzheimer's disease. 
We remember when they can no longer remember. Rakib Aparicio reporting for ABS News. Thanks, Rakib. That item brings us to the end of our national segment. The sporting developments are up next, where the Bena boys look to rebound against Aruba in CONCACAF Nations League. This and more after the break. Stay tuned.